How's it going? Mitch Sigmund here, the disembodied voice of anyway. We're uh, going to today give a demo on my signature square vase. So everybody gets to start out with a pre-centered lump. Uh-huh, just kidding. So didn't figure you needed to see that. I am using a little bit stiffer clay than most people use. And that's going to help along with some of the ways that I create this. You don't have to have so stiff a clay that it hurts your hands to center it, but a little stiffer helps out. And then it just starts out like normal. Drill a hole to make a bottom. I am going to go down all the way to a quarter inch on this bottom because I'm not going to trim this piece. And I definitely want to recompress that bottom down in there very well. And then just like anything, it starts with a cylinder. I like to leave a little bead of clay at the top of my pole. That leaves extra strength in the vase. It makes the top seem like it's twice as thick as it is. Not important now when it's thick, but very important when it gets thinner. As you can see, I like to throw with a sponge over my finger. That's just my style. Teach their own. And I'm going to try and get this cylinder basically the width of my hand. And all the way down to a good quarter inch or less thickness. But I definitely want an even thickness throughout. If I don't have an even thickness in the clay walls, that's going to come back to haunt me later when I start to shape this into the square. So I can take some of that bead out of there, but I still want to leave a little bit of bead on top. And I pretty much got all the clay up. I might want to just get a little bit more at the bottom. Again, I'm not trimming this. I'm just going to hold my finger steady on the inside and run my outside hand up a I'll get that last vestige of clay down there. And this will be I'm making sure everything is the same thickness. So most of this pull is not a pull at all, it's just feeling. Everything feels pretty good. All right, from there, I'm going to clean up the bottom edge here. you notice I'm going to leave a little bit of a ledge down here. And so that when I pull, I'm going to start about a quarter inch high already. And I just want that to match the inside of the pot. And the reason is that's going to be the foot. Again, I'm not going to trim this other than by hand. And I want it to look nice. So the shape I'm going for here is a very slight belly. Roughly in the middle, I do want that belly, the widest part, to be higher than the middle so that it is optically centered or higher. And that gives this piece visual lift. It doesn't look dumpy and frumpy. And I, even though I'm going to alter this piece, I definitely want to pay attention to the shape. Because the reason I'm throwing a square pot instead of hand building it 
is because I want to lend an elegance to it that can only be found on the wheel. So this should pretty much be my final shaping pull. I definitely want to get rid of all those throwing lines, which I've pretty much done. I think I'll narrow this in a little bit at the top. Before I do that, I'm going to get rid of all the clay at the bottom. My sponge on the stick is just a flat, like a yardstick with a sponge wrapped around it and held by a rubber band. It's very effective because I can use that to recompress the bottom and I don't have to worry if I left water down in the middle because I can get it all out, it'll be dry and the inside will be completely flat nice and compressed. Alright, I don't need this much clay out here so I'm going to take a little bit of that off. Alright, now I will color that top in a little bit. I'm just going to take a little bit of water Add water only where I need it, make that nice and wet, and bring that top right in. I want it narrower than I want it to finish because when I reshape this out here, it's going to widen back out a little bit. I want a nice, smooth, continuous contour line. Now that when I turn this out, that extra clay comes in handy because I'm not thinning it out as I turn it and bring it out stays nice and thick and can still can support the piece and it looks like a finished piece on top because it has enough clay. Alright, so that could be an alright base just in itself, but check my contours here. I'm making a square base so why stop early? Alright, so many people think that I paddle this to be round, and I do not. But the first thing you need to do is give it the idea, I mean paddle it to be square, is to give it the idea of a square. And I'm going to use the points on the wheel where my bat is attached to give me kind of a launching point of a square. I'm going to press my sponge and a stick into the wall until I see it coming out. And then I'm going to try and just come straight up with it until I get to the neck. Once I've done that, I'm going to lean out to the side and I'm going to go through that same spot again, but this time I'm concerned about the contour line. So watch the contour line on this take shape. This is the point where it's very important to have a piece that is even thickness. If you don't have an even thickness piece as you're trying to do this part right here, it's going to show. It's going to, as you get to a thin spot on the clay from a thick spot, it's going to push out hard and leave a bump out there. It won't work very well. Then I turn it around to the other side and do the same thing.
Now if I was really concerned about getting a very square vase, I could measure this out on the top, line it up, use a level, stuff like that. I'm concerned with the idea of square, not a perfect square. So I'm just going to eyeball it. When you're first starting out, some of these will come out a little twisted because you didn't pull out very, or pull up very straight. That can have its own aesthetic. Then I turn that to the side, and the nice thing about this perpendicular aspect right here of the flat stick is it makes it nice and easy to judge where that next point has to come out. I pay attention so that I'm not running the top of this stick into the rim of the pot. Now if you start with really soft clay, or if you just push too hard, you're going to go right through, so be prepared for that. I am a seasoned professional, but I do encourage you to try this at home. Some people ask me why I am so persnickety in getting a contour line just to my satisfaction. And the answer is my customers are worth being persnickety for. It's the details that make things work perfectly. Alright, so even just squaring out the rim helps make that even look more squared right off the start. All right, from there, I'm gonna take a piece of molding, uh, an old piece of wood molding, and it's thick on one end, thin on the other. I use the thick part for the heavy work, the thin part when I want a feather touch. I'm trying to get all the clay off of it. So to start with something nice and clean. And the first thing I'm gonna do is come into the bottom here and flatten out a little bit this bottom edge from round. So I'm going to push in, rock back and forth a little bit, and then I'll come to the corner and just kind of gently comb up the side or down the side of that edge. And so all then I am shaping is that corner. Then I go to the next and repeat the process. Push in, rock back and forth. So I'm reshaping that bottom edge and then just gently comb up and down. I don't want to get caught up in achieving perfection on the first time through. Whenever I do these, I go through at least three times on this. So the first time is wet like this. That's the initial one. Then I will come back through wet after I've got it all done or all corners addressed. I'll come back and readdress all corners. That's the second time, and when it's leather hard, I'll come back and do it one more time and get everything to my satisfaction. And the last side pushed in here.
clean the clay off. Take a look at things. One of the things I can do is come up to the top. And support that. Notice I'm not turning on the wheel anymore. I'm doing this all by hand. A lot more control. I'm not adding any water. I want this to be as sturdy as possible. And if I add water, it's just going to soften. Then I'll come back through and touch all these corners again, even lighter touch. Trying to feather my touch on and off of the piece. Occasionally, I'll do what I just did there and it'll stick and leave a little bump in the piece. You just reach in there with your old handy sponge on a stick, push it back out. through again. And while this is not the round to get everything perfect, you do want to get things pretty close to where you want them because as it's leather hard it gets harder to change the shape wholesale. Also what tends to happen is down on this bottom part this part sometimes tends to poof out a little bit so I'm just going to come back in and push that back in gently If I really want to get straight with these, I can look straight down the corner. And that's going to give me the best eye on this. Sometimes I like these corners to wander back and forth, and sometimes I don't. Just depends on which mood I'm in that day. All right, getting there. Now, details, details, details. I'm going to just put that board in the place, slide it off. Put it in the place right where I want the neck to be. Push this, lay this out a little bit. I want to stretch the corner a little bit. This corner stretching is how it gets square. And by moving the wheel, my hand that's holding this board doesn't have to move very much and I can be fairly consistent with that because of that. So that looks pretty square up top. I'm happy with these. Remember this is not your last chance to clean this up. But it is the chance to get all the stuff that makes it look wheel thrown cleaned up. All right, and we'll cut a foot on this. I think I'll get rid of some of these marks here first. I'm just going to run the edge of my rib onto that corner.
get rid of any marks from the piece of molding that I used. Then I'm going to take a fettling knife, line it up, and I just want to cut it to where it's about an eighth inch from the edge, and I want to just follow the contour line by holding my knife hand steady and turning the wheel with my other hand. I can make that pretty steady. And I cut just at an angle, a slight angle in, so it's not square. Up and down, it gives a little bit of an undercut to it. And I'm going to undercut each one of those. If I run through with the wire tool, it makes these harder to pick off because I push that one piece in. And it's getting more and more like a square. Last but not least, I'm going to clean up this foot. Just kind of round that off with the damp sponge. Get that corner rounded off a little bit. Make it look softened up like everything else here. And there we go. Just cut it off the wheel and I'm all set. Thanks for joining me on how to make a square base on the wheel.